Hello everybody. I want to show you how to make a shooting gallery type game in Game Maker. Now this is not my tutorial, but I wanted to have a video of me walking through this particular tutorial. As you can see here, it's one of those shooting galleries where you have a little ducky going across the water and you're trying to shoot it. All right, so, and we'll have other objects as well. Now, all of these tutorials can be found um, in, for my students, in uh, one or more assignment, depending on the class and in my intro to digital tech class, I have this tutorial here. Um, and what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get the PDF file that I'm looking at right there. And the link is right here, shootinggallery.pdf. But you're also gonna wanna download the shooting gallery files. So you wanna click that link, it's gonna download this. It's a zipped compressed folder. So with the zip folder, you wanna make sure you do this right. You click the little, little up, thing there, a little uptick, and you're going to show in folder. All right? You want to be able to see that there, and then you're going to right click on it. Now notice there's that little zipper on the icon. You can see it here, you can see it here. So the whole goal here is you right click and you extract all. And then you're going to show the extracted files when complete. When you are done, you'll have a folder that says shooting gallery files. And my recommendation is that we use this folder to actually create the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to make this, uh, call it shooting gallery project, uh, shooting gallery game, let's say. And I'm going to want to make sure that this folder is in a place I'm not going to lose it. So if you're a student of mine at our school, we have the media drive and you should have a student folder. I recommend you put it there. Um, you can put it wherever, but the main goal is you're going to want to keep this backed up. It's going to take a while to make this game. Uh, this video series should probably be about a half hour long, possibly longer, to get this whole thing done. And so um, you probably won't do it in one take. So you're going to want to make sure you back it up in case um, you don't want to lose your files. So I'm just going to copy this into another folder and I'm going to work off of it. So I recommend you adjust it, you copy that, and you put it into another folder. Here's my folder. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to paste that shooting gallery game right there and the files that come with it, 263K is the file size. And all of these are the assets that you're going to use for the game. And we'll take a look at it as we go and make the game. What you're going to want to do is we're going to do this in Game Maker version 8.0. I believe later versions allow you to actually do this game. One of the things you're going to note at the beginning of this tutorial, and let me just scroll up to the top here, is you're going to see um, there is a thing under the Game Maker Studio where you can select the GM8 skin, and um, and so you, when you see that, that's what you can um, do to sort of create your uh, project. So if you're using a later version of, of Game Maker Studio, this should be able to work. Um, you may also find that some of the instructions on this uh, may not be available at the older version of Game Maker. I will do my best to try to recreate this entire game and where I divert from it, I'll try to point it out on the tutorial. I am currently using Game Maker version 8.0. That's what I'm showing you how to do this in. Um, so I go ahead and open up. I want to open up Game Maker. I'm going to use the light edition because I don't have the professional one. And so I'm going to go into here and we create a new file, a new game, and we'll call it Shooting Gallery. Just do a file, save as. And you want to save this in the right location. Um, so I'm going to go into the Shooting Gallery game and I'm just going to call it Shooting Gallery like so. I'm going to click Save. Now, a couple things. Uh, the first thing you might have noticed, and, and I should show you this in just a moment, I'm just going to copy it, is that uh, Game Maker does really wacky things. A lot of times when you go to Save, uh, watch this, if I do a Save file here, you're going to notice in here, it just says .gmk. You don't want to let Game Maker name your files because it's actually not even going to give it a name. And that's going to cause problems. So you want to actually go into a folder, um, pick and choose where that's going to be so you don't forget it, write out the name of the file, then you can click Save. Okay, so let's go ahead and start working on this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some backgrounds and a room for our game. So in order to get backgrounds, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can go to backgrounds, right click and create a background. I'll show you that. Um, and then we're going to click load background. Now notice because I saved this into the shooting gallery game, I have all these right here. 
So there's BG Curtain. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do the same kind of naming convention. Now watch this. I'm going to double click on this BG Curtain part. Okay, I won't double click. I'll highlight it. Copy that. I'm going to copy that for a moment. I'm going to click open. Now I'm going to double click here and I'm going to paste BG underscore curtain and click OK for my background. Now the other way we can do this is we can drag and drop our files. So I'm going to go right into here. I'm going to take the next one, BG water, drag it and drop it. And you're going to see, please indicate what type of resource you want to create. Well, I want to create a background. And if I scroll down here, I will see at the bottom there is my water. This is meant to be a tiled background. Okay, but it's not a tile set because it's one background. This is going to tile left to right. And notice the first thing it does, it wants to put out background BG water. Now, whatever you do for your name, you can either call it background or BG. Um, just be consistent. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of the background underscore and just call it BG water. BG curtain, BG water, and we've got one more. Let's go ahead and bring that out, which is BG wood. Created as a background. And we'll just name them all starting with BG. Click OK. All right, so there are the three different backgrounds. One of the things we're going to want to do is create a room. And we're going to call this room one, and I'll show you where. So I'm going to go over to rooms. I'm going to right click and create a room. And where I go to settings, I can change it now. I'm going to put room underscore one. It's our first room. Now, uh, a couple of things you want to think about is the width and the height. Now, in the tutorial, they have you doing, uh, by the way, the graphics are set to be 1,024 pixels wide by 768 tall. And um, if we fill out the screen here, you'll notice I have a little scroll bar for up and down. We're going to test this out in a moment. To see if it's the right size. Like I said, the backgrounds are set to basically uh, fit in this width and height, but you may find on your screen you want to adjust that. So I'll show you what that looks like and where to adjust it. Now the speed, we're going to leave this as 30, and what this means is how often number of steps per second in the update. So in our game loop, it's going to loop, and 30 times every second it's going to check all of the objects, every object that's in our game. Um, 30 times every second. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. So we have our name, we changed the width and the height, we kept the speed the same. Now we're going to add our backgrounds. So we're going to start with background zero, and what we want to do is choose a background. And so the order in which we want to do this is going to be important. The wood is going to be behind everything else. So we're going to start with the background of wood, and I'm going to uncheck that. One of the things you'll notice, it's a tiling background. It's set to tile horizontally and vertically because both of those are checked. That's background zero. Now notice we can have up to eight different backgrounds, so we can layer these. So this is the bottommost zero. It's behind everything else. We want to put our curtain on top of that. So we'll put the curtain and we'll put in the water. I don't think it really matters which order between curtain or water that is. So let's go ahead and background curtain. And the first thing you notice is this, we don't want it tiled horizontally and vertically. We want to uncheck tiled vertically, so we just run the curtain along the top. And then we're going to go to background two, and now we're going to choose the water. And notice, um, it because the, the tall part of that water, we don't have to tile it vertically if we don't want to. But it doesn't change anything because the height of the graphic actually matches the setting that's there. So this is what our room looks like. Let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to save my changes. You should always save your changes. I'm going to click on the green arrow to test it out. And we're going to see if this fits in the screen well or not. And if it's too big, we'll have to readjust it. And that actually fits fine in the screen. So this is a good size. If you find like you're on a laptop or something and you need it smaller, you can change it. The, the real trick is going to be on settings. Let's say I make this 800 by 600. Now, right now the height is the same, so the water looks good. But if I do 800 by 600, you'll see that that water got cut off. And so part of the problem is because of that background for the water, now that it's tiled horizontally, 
um, we're going to want to change its y position. We're going to want to move it up. So you're going to want to put like a negative number. And let's try negative 50 just to see what happens. So negative 80. And so you get the idea um, that, you know, think about it. Whoop negative 100. So you, you can play around with these numbers, the x and y position. In this case, it would be the y because that, that graphic, as you may recall, and let's look at the graphic, has all of that white space above it. The other thing you can do is if that seems too confusing, you can edit the background itself. So I'm going to undo what I just did because, um, like I said, the setting was fine. So that's 1024. By 768. Okay. Like I said, you want to save often and you want to test often. If you go to testing and it doesn't look right, go back. Don't move on to the next step until you figure it out what was wrong because if you have a problem now, it's not going to go away later because this is all assuming that everything is working okay. On the next step, we're going to add some sprites and a couple objects. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to the same step. I'm going to go to sprites and I'm going to drag in a couple of sprites. So what we're going to do now is for our sprites, we're going to use um, the crosshair. I'm going to want that. So I'm going to drag this over. And I'm going to click sprite because I want to make it a sprite. And notice how you have the sprite zero crosshair. I'm going to get rid of the zero and it's just going to be sprite underscore crosshair. And there's our crosshair. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set the origin on here. Now what the origin is, is where is, um, like, whenever we place an object in the screen, we want to place it in relationship to this, this image. So right now an origin of 0, 0 means it's the upper left-hand corner. So if we want to position this in the screen, we're going to want to position it in relationship to its origin. This may not, this may not make sense, but let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to center this. So center this puts the origin in the exact center of the crosshair. And why this is significant is this crosshair is going to follow the mouse. And so we want it to follow the mouse based on the center of the crosshair, not the upper left-hand corner, which is outside of the, that. So we want to set this origin. And then that means that the point of the cursor is going to be right. It's going to follow right exactly at the center of the crosshair. So that's really important. So we've got our sprite crosshair. Let's add the ducky. So we're going to go back over here and we're going to do the duck. So we're going to drag that out. I'm going to create a sprite. And this will be sprite, not one, but sprite underscore duck. Now, in the case of the duck, we want to position this relative to the bottom of the duck, but probably about the center. So what we need to do is we need to look at the width and the height. Now, first of all, the height is 109. And we want this, we want the origin at the bottom of the screen. And this should be 57. And you'll notice there's a line sticking up here and a cross down there. So it's basically the origin is now at the bottom of the duck. And that's going to be important for where we place our ducky. So we're just going to click OK. And now uh, I'm going to go ahead and click OK on there. Let's add one more, which is the duck target for now. And then we'll start uh, doing a little bit of coding on there. The, okay, so on here, one of the things that we're going to do is in order to hit this duck, we have to hit it right on here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the origin again like I did before. So that was 57. It's the same dimensions and 109. So now the center is down there because this relationship to how we move the ducky left and right. Now what we're going to want to do is we need to make it so you can only hit the duck if you hit the target. So what we're going to do is there's this collision checking. We're not going to check in the outer part of the ducky. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Modify Mask. And right away, by default, it creates this bounding box. In other words, everything that's shaded is the what can get hit. And we want to change it just to here. So a couple of things that we're going to do is um, I'm going to make it as a rectangle to begin with. And I want that rectangle to fit exactly around that target. So we're going to play around a little bit with the left and the right, the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to click manual because we're going to specify this ourselves. So we're going to go over and I think I determined it was about 72. Nope, that's too far. So 72 will be the right order. Let's try 50 for now. Nope, let's try 30. 
So we'll try about 34. Yeah, by 72. Have you noticed the left and the right here is about right? And on the top, let's try 50, 54. That's about right. And on the bottom, we'll try 80. Nope. We'll try 90, 94. And that looks really close. You look at it. And now we're going to change it from a rectangle to a disc. Looks like the top could be a little bit higher, so we'll try 56. And that looks pretty good. I mean, I can zoom in a little bit and see, but I think we're pretty close. You just want to get it as close as you can and just click OK. So at this point, we have our three main sprites. Um, we're going to add a couple more a little bit later, and then we're going to add some objects. And so we're going to go into that in the next tutorial. So what I'd like you to do is in the meantime, why don't you go back to the shooting gallery game, and why don't you go ahead and add all the remaining sprites, the ammo, the um, game over, and the hull and the target. So I'd like you to go ahead and just finish adding those sprites in, target bullets. We'll look at these in just a bit.